Hello, boils and ghouls and fellow parasites. Welcome to another episode of the Venom Vlog. In today's episode, I thought I would do something fun for Valentine's Day, and hopefully this does go up on Valentine's Day. If not, hopefully soon after. Uh, but what do we want to talk about today is chillers. I want to talk about first loves, and that's something we've brushed on in this series, you know, as we've gone through the whole history of Venom, but we haven't really done any deep dives into the years that Peter Parker was wearing the black costume before it went to Eddie Brock. Sure, we've talked about it a little bit and discussed it here and there, but we haven't done any deep dives into it. So this season, that's what I want to do. And I not only want to talk about the comic book version, which we will get to, we'll talk about Secret Wars and the alien costume saga, we'll get to all that stuff. But before we get there, I wanted to cover this version. So in today's episode, I'm going to be doing a reading for you, and I'm going to be reading the first eight chapters of this, which is roughly about 30 pages in length. This is a 92, 93 page book in total. So this is part one of our saga of the alien costume trilogy. So, uh, so I'm breaking this up into three episodes. So I hope you guys enjoy. Let me know in the comments down below what you think. If you liked it, didn't like it, whatever it is, let me know down below. Uh, but without further ado, I now present to you guys the first eight chapters of Chillers. Chapter 1 We only have a 30 second window of opportunity to get back to Earth, Spider-Man. We'll never make it. We have to make it, Spider-Man yelled. Look, we're passing Orion now. It can't be much further. I notice the beads of sweat forming like puddles of rain on Doc Connors' head as we fly together through the universe. He thinks there's not enough time to make it back into the portal of energy that would transport us back to Earth. I'm telling you, Spider-Man, the portal is closing. We're gonna be trapped. Soon our reserve oxygen supply will be used up. In a heartbeat, our eyes will burst into our heads. Our insides will be our outsides. Can't you please step on it? I'm trying. I'm not used to this atmosphere. It's getting harder and harder to keep on course. From a great distance, I see the portal shining like a beacon of life. We can both see it. It's as if the opening is taunting us, teasing us back into believing we can actually make it back home. 10 seconds, Spider-Man. We've got 10 seconds before that thing brought us here closes for another millennium. For the first time in my life, I panic. On Earth, I travel as a superhero, but here, in the swirling vortex of a black hole, I mean nothing. Nothing more than a speck, a crumb of life in the universe. And soon, for all eternity, I may be no more. With my last ounce of energy and nothing left to lose, I holler, Doc, hang on. I'm gearing up to go warp speed. Close your eyes or you'll lose them for sure. Speed kills, I know, but it's our last chance. Traveling faster than I ever thought possible, the portal was now in our reach. Five. I see it! Four. No, it's closing! Three. It's closing! Two. Dear God! No! <laughs> Peter screamed and bolted upright out of bed. Holding his head in his hands, he whispered to himself, I can't take this anymore. It's my first night back on Earth and all I want to do is sleep. I just want to get some sleep. Chapter 2 But after two hours of torturous nightmares, Peter gave up trying to sleep. He got up from bed, walked to his window, and looked out at the dark, clear night. With great power comes great responsibility. He repeated those words over and over again as he looked out onto the silent city. These words always brought comfort to him, even though they originated from a horrible act, the murder of his Uncle Ben. Peter felt guilty because he had chosen not to use his powers to catch the robber who later murdered his uncle. He had vowed to never use his powers irresponsibly again. With great power comes great responsibility. Peter repeated once more as he squeezed his eyes shut. He took a deep breath and sighed. Exhausted, Peter walked to the chair by his desk. There, slung carefully over the chair back, lay his new costume, a souvenir from his outer space trip. In the midst of a battle on Planet X, his old red and blue spider costume had been ripped beyond repair. He needed something to replace it, and quick. Using materials he found on the strange planet, Peter made a new costume. A black beauty with sleeker, bolder lines than his old suit. And just for that extra touch, he had added an all-new spider emblem on the front. Not only did it look better, it felt better. P 
Peter stroked the new costume and recalled how, when he returned to Earth wearing it, no one recognized him as Spider-Man. Ah, but that will change, he said. As he walked back to his bed, Peter opened his mouth and let out a comforting yawn. Maybe now I can finally get some sleep, he said, getting back into bed. No deal. One half hour later, after tossing and turning, throwing the covers off and putting them back on, after trying every position short of sitting on his head, Peter Parker gave up. It's no use, he conceded as he sat up in bed. I may never sleep again. I've got to go out and do something. Maybe I'll put on my new costume for a little web slinging. And before he could finish his sentence, he thought he saw something move. No way, he whispered to himself as he pushed the covers from his body. It must have been a shadow. Gosh, I'm so tired. I'm starting to imagine things. Before Peter could even get out of bed, he was startled by the noise. A sickening plop, like the splat of raw meat hitting the floor. Peter crawled to the end of his bed, and there, slithering and writhing towards him, was a black blob. Chapter 3 As the bizarre object took shape, he realized what it was. It was his own costume, and it was moving. No way, he said, scampering back to the front of his bed. His heart thumped in his chest like a war drum. He watched the blackness of his costume creep upwards onto his bed sheets, about to touch his toes. This can't be happening, he whispered to himself. It never did this in outer space. But it was happening now. His fear held him prisoner on his own bed. He nearly suffocated from the panic rising from his stomach. He wished he was wearing his old Spider-Man costume, and no sooner had he thought those words, the new costume oozed towards Peter's feet. It tickled around his toes like a wispy breeze. Peter kicked at the costume, but it wouldn't move away. It followed his feet around the bed. His eyes darted around the room, looking for a place to hide, while tiny beads of sweat formed on his upper lip. Even with all the enemies he had battled as Spider-Man, not one of them spooked him like this. Then, in a strange rhythmless dance, the costume swirled madly around him. Finally, it touched him. It didn't hurt, though. The costume had a certain smoothness to it. It started at his feet again. This time, it didn't withdraw at Peter's violent kicking. It continued to creep up his leg, causing Peter to flail around on his bed. Frantically, he tried to shake the thing off, but it wouldn't budge. Rising up from his legs, it clung to his stomach. Peter swatted at it, and still, it would not leave him. Soon, it seized the muscles in his arms and crept up to his neck. Peter gasped for one last breath of air before the black mass covered his face. Chapter 4 When he felt his lungs would burst, Peter exhaled. Then he tried to inhale and... no problem. He could breathe. Still, Peter tried to shake the costume from himself. He waved his arms frantically around his head. He twisted his torso and shook his legs. The costume would not come off. Crippled with fright at the sight of himself, he struggled to break free from this all-consuming costume. In a final act of desperation, he leaped from his bed and flung himself through the bedroom window. <coughs> Chapter 5 Falling twenty stories, he knew not only would the costume be destroyed, but so would he. Just then, somewhere near the twelfth story, a streak of black shot from the wrist of the costume and stuck fast to the wall. Suddenly, Spider-Man found comfort in his odd situation. The costume hadn't hurt him, it actually saved him. He decided that instead of going back to his apartment, he might try a little web-slinging. Maybe the suit had better powers than his old one. Maybe it wasn't really all that bad. Maybe it just had some weird properties. First, he tried to shoot a web. It worked. The costume shot a magnificent web from his right arm, as good as any form from his old web shooters. As he swung through the majestic skyline from building to building, Spider-Man felt stronger and better than ever. His problems as Peter Parker began to fade. He wanted to test his new costume, his new look. Maybe it was time to give up his old ways for some new thrills. I'm going to put the pedal to the metal, baby, Spider-Man shouted. He launched into a series of spectacular triple somersaults from rooftop to rooftop. He pinged and zinged and soared, but his excitement was short-lived. His spider senses tingled into overdrive. Then he heard the argument from the streets below. Look, I couldn't get the tickets. Why don't you believe me? That group stinks anyway, an angry man shouted at his girlfriend. You did this on purpose, she screamed back at him. Just then, Spider-Man swung into the fray. Hey, take five, guys. Mind your own business, buddy. You've got no business in this neighborhood anyway. How about you beat it? Nah, 
How's about I take you both for a ride instead, so you can cool your jets for a minute? Before they could say no, Spider-Man had them up and whipping around the skyline of New York with him. He stopped at the nearest building ledge and dropped them off. Now look around you, Spider-Man said. The pair stood dumbfounded. They could say nothing and simply did what the dark web slinger asked. Spider-Man continued, Hey, I realize this city isn't perfect, but there's a lot of real beauty down there too. This city is like a living creature. It has the potential for incredible good or horrible evil. It's a part of you whether you like it or not. You'll always carry it with you. And as the amazing web slinger spoke these words of caution to the scared but grateful couple, he couldn't know what these words would come to mean to him, to the man that was Peter Parker in the days to come. Chapter 6 The ringing sounded more like a siren than a telephone. From beneath the covers, Peter counted a tenth high-pitched ring. He wanted to answer, but his body refused to let him. His eyes felt like two garage doors stuck in the down position. Finally, Peter pried his eyes open and fumbled for the receiver next to his bed. Uh, hello? Parker, where are you? You've missed a week of work already. If I can't count on you, then there are a hundred other freelance photographers waiting for your job. It was Peter's boss, the editor-in-chief of the Daily Bugle, Joe Robbie Robertson, not so kindly reminding him that he had responsibilities in life other than keeping his identity as Spider-Man a secret. I'm sorry, Robbie. I was, uh, tr traveling, Peter replied, still trying to shake himself into the world of the awake. Well, you better travel yourself over here for an assignment, or you'll be traveling somewhere else looking for work. Click. The line went dead. Peter planted his feet on the floor and rubbed the sleep from his eyes. I have to get myself together, he thought. He turned on his rickety answering machine so he wouldn't have to take any more angry phone calls. He went to the window and raised the shade. The sun streaming into his room almost blinded him. What time is it, he thought. He looked at the clock, which read 2.07 p.m. Peter rarely overslept. The trip to outer space really took a lot out of me. I must have been through a million different time zones. It's obvious my body can't take that kind of beating, he rationalized. Peter then rummaged through his dresser for something to wear. Unfortunately, he found his dresser to be as empty as his refrigerator. Everything I own is dirty and laying in a pile on my floor. I can't go to work in my bathrobe. From behind Peter's back, in his bathroom, the black costume swayed onto a clothing line, almost as if a phantom hand were trying to unclip it. He started sifting through his dirty laundry. He sniff-tested each item to find one clean enough to wear to the office. The costume flapped and swayed even more violently. It's no use. I can't wear any of these clothes. Ugh! I have to get my life back to normal. Peter went over to his black costume. He said to it, You're the key to my new outlook on life as Spider-Man. Now if I could change a few things in my life as Peter Parker, I'd be okay. He unclipped the costume from the clothesline and accidentally dropped it to the floor. Gosh, I am so clumsy sometimes. As soon as the costume hit the floor, it surged towards Peter's feet. What the... Peter cried. Not again! Chapter 7 The alien material consumed him as it had the night before. But now, when Peter looked in the mirror, he was dressed in blue jeans and a sweatshirt, both perfectly clean. Well, I'll be, Peter remarked. This costume seems to know what I'm thinking, and what I need. This time, Peter didn't second guess what happened. After all, as Spider-Man, he had witnessed all kinds of unusual things. Besides, the costume didn't really hurt him. It actually helped him. Last night he felt better than ever, doing somersaults off buildings, and now it became a fresh, clean outfit to wear. He put on a pair of shoes, grabbed his camera, and went to look for his camera bag. Now where is that bag? He asked as he sorted through the pile of clothes. But today, Peter would need no camera bag. As he held the camera close to his body, the costume absorbed the piece of equipment into the area of Peter's stomach. Peter said nothing. He felt no pain and he felt no camera. Peter decided to test the costume. He thought, give me the camera. He held his hands to his stomach and out popped the camera. Again, no pain. Hold my camera, he spoke. Once again, the costume obeyed his command and absorbed the camera. Amazing. Weird, but still amazing, Peter noted. And without hesitation, he grabbed his keys and bolted out the door. No sooner than Peter had bounded down the steps, his telephone rang. On the fourth ring, his machine answered. Believe it or not, Peter isn't at home. So leave a message at the beep. He must be out, or he'd pick up the phone. Where could he be? Believe it or not, Peter's not home. Spider-Man, this is Reed Richards. 
I've spoken to Doc Connors about your trip to outer space. I'm worried about that costume you've brought back. Please call me as soon as possible. Time is of the essence. After Reed hung up, the machine turned off and rewound the tape. Peter's machine was on its last leg. He kept meaning to replace it, but never got around to it. As a result, the incoming message light did not blink. Instead, it glowed blankly, as if no one had ever called. Chapter 8 You're late, Parker, Robbie Robertson scolded his young photographer. I'm sorry, Robbie. I got caught up in the darkroom, Peter fibbed. Robbie came down hard on Peter. He knew Peter could do better work than the stuff he'd turned in recently. He thought a kick in the pants might do the trick. I promise, I'll get on the stick and get you some great shots this week, Peter assured his cranky boss. You better, young man. After all, you're not the only freelancer in town. Peter left the office feeling dejected. He made his way down the hallway and decided to take the steps instead of the elevator. On his way past the 15th floor, his spider senses started tingling. Uh-oh, trouble's brewing. It's time for action, and hopefully some great pictures. Peter reached for the door. As he grabbed the doorknob, he saw the blackness forming on his fingertips. And in a split second, all of his ordinary clothes turned into his sleek black Spider-Man costume. This costume assumes any identity I want, Spider-Man thought. It's like some kind of all-in-one wardrobe, he said. This could be the best thing that ever happened to me. He bounded through the open door and onto a little used floor of the Daily Bugle's offices. At the nearest window, his spider senses told him to head east toward the abandoned warehouse by the river. Through the open window, he shot a web from his wrist. It clung to an office tower across the street. He swung from the window through the air, and soon, web after web, he flew, building to building, to the source of the trouble. Spider-Man felt great. He called down to the onlookers below, Just another job for your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man! The dazed crowds watching from below did not know what to think. Spider-Man wore a blue and red outfit. Who was this guy dressed in all black? A boy no older than seven tugged on his father's sleeve. Daddy? He said as he pointed to the sky. That's not Spider-Man. That's not Spider-Man at all.